Welcome back everybody, Just Mike here. I have a cuckoo clock from Dave and Kathy that would they would like it fixed and so we're going to see what's wrong with it. Uh, it's missing a few pieces, it's broke and we're going to try to get it all back together again and we might go ahead and see if we can find some uh, decent price pieces that this clock needs. Anyway, the shop is just now done. I'm still doing a few things, but this is a good practice for me to see what I need different, if I need anything different in the shop. So anyway, let's take a look at this clock. So this is the clock we have. This piece is broke off, needs to be re-glued back on. It's broke up here, so we're going to take this off so we can get it all back together again. It's missing a hand. So we'll probably end up putting uh, new hands all together. The chain's here and looks like it's all in the bag. This does have a door lock, but the wire's pushed in too far. The bird's not wanting to come out. Let's take a look. Oh, it might be because of the paper towels or whatever inside. So they made that so it doesn't uh, going in the mail. And the bird has been taped to the whistle box. I see that one's taped shut too. That's not too necessary, but then again, like I say, I have made those wires that holds all that together. But they're trying their best here. Tape's not necessarily a good thing because it does or could start ripping on things. So once we get this here fixed where the wire sticks out far enough, you can keep that door shut. That way that's going to solve a lot of the problem. So anyway, let me get this tape stuff off. And let's see if we can get this clock to even run or what it does before I even tear into it. So possibly here, you can see that the chain's off the wheel. We'll put it back on, but let me set this back a little bit. So this one's still on, it's this one here that's off. get it back on. So it does tick. I don't know if it tick with the, it feels kind of tight, so I don't know if it tick with the actual weight or not. So it sounds like it's eight o'clock, which on, this is the hour hand. You just turn it over to eight o'clock, push it back on so it's snug and that's set. Now you just have to make sure your hour hand is straight up. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart, pull the hour hand off and we're going to release the bird. Then we'll take the screws out of the bellow on both sides and there's a nail in here so we can just pop that off and disconnect the wire. I disconnected the bird already and I, and I pulled this wire out and I had to bend it up a little bit to get the cover over the door. This here has been stapled in so and this one does say made in made in Germany so you know for sure this isn't that old of a clock. It does have some age but it's not that old. So anyway we're going to go ahead and be prying those things off 
in order to, like I say, fix this thing properly. And I don't know if I'm going to be keeping those or if I'm going to stick in real nails. It makes it a little bit easier to take the frame off of here if you ever had to work on it again. And those staples might be too hard to line up and get it pressed on there without it breaking again. Okay, inside here, this is the type that on the lift wire, they're a circle. And so on the arms, you have to open them up in order to get them off easily. So keep your wires on. The bell it came off of because you don't know uh, whether it's uh, shorter or longer. Normally your right side is longer. I still got the leather skin here for the bellow and so far looks like it's okay. You can see what the damage did with the tape on here and which doesn't affect it any. It just that it takes away. And I'll go ahead and put the screw in. So here on the left side the wire is just a little bit longer than the right side. So I'm going to push these nails in that held the bellows from moving back and forth. Then I'm going to take those uh, four screws out. We'll take this here pendulum arm off of here. Looks like I have to open it up a little bit because it's really tight. As I'm taking the ring and hooks off the chain, I notice this here eaten out part. I can tell you exactly what that is. This clock is hung and probably they nailed it into the 2x4 or use a screw. But then there's a plug-in right below and as the chain went down, whatever was plugged in this thing from above dropped down in between the plug-in and probably caused it to blow the circuit or whatever. But I can pretty much guarantee you that's what that was. Pulling that one is pretty tight. This one does a lot better. It's a sign that it needs a uh, clean more than likely. So let me get the four screws out of here and we'll be in business. So it's nice. This does have a uh, metal legs on the bird. Those plastic ones, they, they break so easily. They're still doable, but... So all considering, this isn't really too bad. I mean, you can see on the shaft, where there's a lot of dust. A little dirty in there. But the movement itself doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's going to need cleaning. Here on this you can see a build up where the little bit of oil was that what had a big old glob of dust like i say every th every time you have a little bit of oil showing that's the first place the dust will go come and you see on the fan here that slows the bird down 
when he cuckoos, that there's got a pile of dust on it. So we're going to go ahead and take this apart and get it oiled. But first things first, you want to take pictures as you're taking this thing apart if you haven't done it before, such as on the front, for example. Take so many pieces off and then take another picture so you know the layers to get up to here. Uh, someone that's worked on clocks before, that's not as important. But for a new person, they might not know what each of these things are. Now, I did have people asking about a clock that only cuckoos once on the hour and once on the half hour. And they're wondering what's wrong. This here is what is triggered to let the clock know whether it's on the hour or the half hour and it also because of the snail here it has cutouts and each one of these represents a time on the clock which clear down here this big cutout that would be 12 o'clock so if this here rod isn't dropping down all the way onto the snail, then that's your problem whether there's a chance you might have to oil this part right here to get it to start moving or some of these clocks, not this one, but some of these clocks have an actual wire that comes off of here and it's a spring wire and it rests on top of here to push it down so that way you for sure will get a the proper hour for this thing to cuckoo now the last we did this i think it was eight o'clock so here be one two three four five six seven eight yep eight o'clock and of course nine ten eleven twelve and it's kind of hard to see maybe That one, this one's even made out of plastic, so maybe that's why it's harder to see that one. But that's why I say on these two, I, I never bring my, you see some people do it, but take your minute hand, turn it backwards. This will do it because it does have a, a was it 30 degree or whatever it is, so that way cut on the metal. So that way it's able to slide by, but that's not good for your clock. So when you're gluing this stuff, it's good to have a paper towel with some moisture on it. So you can wipe up any ex excess glue. At the moment I got a flat surface. It's not too important. Yes, you want it flat, but you're going to be putting the rubber bands on and just the same, even with the rubber bands on, because they're going to be on here and down here and you can see it's not perfect anyway that uh it'll it, you want it as flat as possible so it'll fit the box and when you're putting the glue on i'm just using this you want to get the glue moistened on this side and this side and here and here so that way it's already starting to soak into the wood so when you press it together it'll be bonding a lot easier than one side being a little bit too dry and you want to kind of be careful with how much glue you put on because you, you don't necessarily want to leak out the sides but that's what the paper towel is for is to mop up any glue that's sticking out on this side you don't care as much as much about the back side because if need be you can shave it off or scrape it off or whatever if it's in the way which this here would probably be the only place you have to really worry about but just the same i'll be as careful as i can be so when i'm gluing i use these rubber bands here and if you don't feel it has enough strength once you put that on there, you can put more than one rubber band. The more you put on, the more it's going to be pushing in. 
and you don't need all those fancy clamps and whatnot. And sometimes it's hard to use a fancy clamp because they don't sit very well sometimes. So let's go ahead and start this glue. You can see I got too much. There's a reason for it. There it is. So there's no hurry. This isn't super glue. When you're putting the rubber bands on, try to have the same tension here as you do on the back side. Otherwise, this thing's going to want to curl up on you. And I put that one up there because I see I have a little leak of glue. Doesn't want to wipe off as easy. Take your screwdriver So I had to pull this up because I saw a crack in here I didn't have these even This looks like it needs some downward pressure And you can't always be perfect, but this is the time to try to be as perfect as you can so it'll hide the crack. You want these lines to line up nicely. See right there is a the crack. And this one happened to break off to where it's almost hidden on its own anyway. And of course right here was split. Now it doesn't set level because the rubber bands are twisted. I'm not going to be too concerned about it. And that should take care of that piece. So on that we'll let it set to dry 24 hours just to make sure things are good. And we'll put it back on the box. And hopefully we won't have to restain it. Uh, it looks pretty good right now so I don't think we're going to have to. Uh, obviously the box is dusty and that will clean up quite nice I do believe now in this box you can see I would say that was a uh, grill of glue because it looks a little foamy but whoever had this uh, tried gluing the crown on top of here and we're not going that route if I can get a top uh, we do have the parts that you nail in here and then the top can just fit on here. Now the type this is, it will have the bird that sits on top with just the, the leaves and then of course it extends just a little bit past the roof. So let's uh, see what size of a crown we need. 
so we can kind of shop and see what size it is. Anyway, normally you will go across the roof. Here we have seven inches, and so I'm going to say we need between a seven and a half to eight inch crown that goes on here. So it's hot today, and I added an air conditioner in here, so you can hear it in the background. Sorry, I'll probably play music because as soon as I stop talking, this camera seems to suck it right up. Anyway, here's the frame of this clock, all glued together. Didn't turn out too bad. Now, I did set this crown on. It belongs to another clock, but it's the same type that's supposed to be with this clock. It's got the bird on it, and this is what it looks like. And if I was to add this one to it, it would have to be stained to match this or this match that, whatever, which is easier because this is darker to make this match that. And this is actually too big. Let me sh give you a quick measurement here. So this one happens to be nine and a half. And I mentioned it should be, what, approximately eight, eight I think I said. See, we have seven and a quarter. And so you can do an eight inch here and it'd look fine. And that gives you room to move it back and forth on the roof. But yes, the one with the bird and the leaves that match are the one that belongs to this clock. And it's not important to have the crown because the clock actually looks fine without it. But for the extra bling, it's nice to have it. So on this movement, we're going to go ahead and take it apart. I did take pictures all the way around, top, bottom, the front and the back. And this here will also show you a wire spring that helps this clock tell what time it is when it's triggered. Once we get down there, I'll show you where it is. But first, we have to take this clip off so that way we can get the disc off and the disc is what holds these gears in place and we'll take that one off that looks like I can get it off without Normally this one gets stuck on that one when you're trying to take it off. Again, this here part is the part that when this here drops, that there little angle part right there with the dust on it, it drops in here and it tells it what hour it is. So we can take this gear off too that had the disc on top. And there's preformed in there the little barrel, so I don't have to worry about anything there. Some clocks ha have a brass bushing in here, or whatever, uh, that holds that gear up into place so it can hit like it's supposed to. So this is the part that drops on this gear that drops down and hits on here if you make your clock run backwards a lot because you're adjusting the time that's not a good thing because this does have an angle to it but eventually this might get bent and then instead of dropping here it's setting in behind and it's going to be dragging on the back and either hitting uh, one o'clock all the time or just one cuckoo on the half hour and on the hour or it 
might slip a little bit further and do a six or whatever. So I suggest don't make your clocks go backwards unless you know what to fix if it does get bent out of shape. In which this here, all you have to do is just bend it back over so it can hit on here. Now on the snail, this is a plastic snail. That's why it's got that funny color on it, we'll say. This does have spider webs in here. So it does show that more than likely this clock hadn't ran for a while and then they started to, or wanted to get it running and just the age of the oil in it and the spider webs. I haven't found the dead spider yet, so. So looking at this, you can see a spring wire. And normally I don't see the spring wire pushing this down. This here is what goes along this piece. That part clicks onto each one of these as this wheel's turning and so it counts the hour that way so they must have found on this type of works it wasn't very strong and it's not hitting right now but when it goes up it's being pushed down just ever so lightly right there so there's another thing i noticed i don't know if this works this movement came with that there clock and the reason why I'm saying that is because right here there's a spring in there and that's normally something on like a shut off so you don't have to listen to it cuckoo at night. It would push on here and cause this not to be able to cuckoo, just run. So I don't know, like I say, whether this is original or not but on the but on the clock box itself there's no cutout for the switch and there wasn't a switch on here which is easy to take off so that's just another special note as I'm putting it together that I do need to get that spring back in there just because that's the way this thing's gonna work and that there e-clip doesn't slide all the way down it has a a line in there that holds it in place right there so this one does have a lot of plastic pieces such as this part here that trick when the cuckoo's triggered it'll drop down and keep the bird out that there's plastic it does have a metal rod looks like going through it now this here, to get it out, there's an E-clip up just against this plate here to hold that into place. And this one had the spring on it. So we can get that out. This one here already took the clip off. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it out right away. realistically the birds in the way and so carefully you can spread these apart a little bit you break them you're kind of going to be SOL so I open it a little bit give this a twist and see if I can get it to pop out And same with this other one. And there we go. So now this should just come right out. And if you took pictures, you'll notice this area here. That's where this goes in there so it can make that part work. Now right here are the triggers for the cuckoo. One is a little bit taller than the other one 
And so it'll know, that's how it knows whether it's a half hour or whether it's an hour when it does trigger. So I also take these out. I take the things out that are easy enough that I can get back in without any timing issues per se. To get the these arms off that go to the uh, lift wires of the bellow, you have those two E-clips in there and there's one down here. One's for the gong and then two are for the hammers. And taking the picture, so you remember this one here, the gong is on the bottom and then you have this shorter arm and then the longer arm. And the spring is just just bent over. So you just undo it and it, there's a hole there. I'm not going to worry too much about it until I get these uh, E-clips off. And these are the ones they are so small that you got to watch because they'll go flying on you. Because usually you'll have to get a fatter screwdriver to push this way to get it to release. So with those off, push these out of the way kind of, you should be able to just pull them out. Now this wire hadn't pulled all the way through that hole yet. There we go. Now these do have the opening for this little paddle. That little paddle is what hits that, well let's call it a star wheel, so that way it knows when to jump up and down to make the cuckoo sound or whatever. So we've pretty much got everything off that we can and it might be a good time to take a picture now to see what has to be put in here as you're screwing the plates down such as this here is going to be installed as you're putting the plates together and before you get totally down this will have to be installed and you can't take it out right now but it's going to come out as soon as I take those off and start separating the plate so go ahead and get pictures are going to be your friend when you come to do these things even if you do them all the time it's still going to become your friend so taking off the last nut I already took the other three off and I also put my legs on here and these legs are not important to have because you can use a dish like this anything that the it will fit over because you have your, that's called the, the hour hand rod or whatever, is going to be hitting. And I just soon, and you probably too, just soon take this plate off. Because what I, I like doing is once I get the plate off, if I can keep these gears into place, I can take a, another picture. Because, yeah, the plate's in the way and it's hard to see just exactly where they go unless you've done this for a while. So I got those screws off. Right away your pendulum part comes off. There's your spring wire right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's get a picture of this the way it looks without the plate on there to give you a real good idea of how this thing sets up. Okay let's take off our winders first. Yeah this is the one that really feels tight. I see a drop of rust in there too. 
So obviously we're going to be cleaning it, but then I think just re-oiling it, things are going to be good. If not, there's a chance this could have been pressed down too hard, but normally not. We'll, we'll take a look at that. And this here is the time side. Now there's what your pendulum hits the count the seconds or whatever. This one here won't come out. I don't plan taking it out because it's pressed. There's your other gear. And considering this clock actually is pretty clean, like I say, besides a few cobwebs or whatever. Now there's that star wheel that uh, when when the pl the paddles hit it, your gong and your cuckooing operate off of that, and that's part of your timing you're gonna have to be doing. This one turns really nice. There's your fan. That's what uh, you see dust on there from it going around or oil or something from whatever house this is in. Obviously we'll be cleaning it too. This here is what slows your cuckoo bird from cuckooing too fast and so as long as this thing's lightly on, on this gear because it just kind of clips in right there. You can see how it goes over. Maybe. This one won't come out. And I'll show you why. This here is the one that the cuckoo bird uh, gets stopped from going or going back in until it's triggered to go back. And you might want to take a picture or pay attention. This here's got a metal rod here. This one's fatter. So we'll show you why. Let me take these extra feet off that I have. I call them my spoiler feet. Anyway, this here will pry off. I'm not going to because number one, that's another timing issue you're going to have to mess with. But why start making it sloppy? The It's kind of sloppy already in, in this plate and that's normal. So don't worry about that. This one here, I don't want to have to take off the pressure uh, of this, and it, it's also sloppy, I guess we'll call it, which is normal. So now I can go ahead and clean this plate and clean all these parts. So after I have all the parts clean through the, I do have the sonic cleaner, which is only to make my job faster. But then I'm also going to take it into the house and wash it with a nice hot water, soapy water. I'm going to use Dawn dishwashing soap. I'll probably use a toothbrush to scrub the gears and get it all clean. Take a toothpick to this plate right where each one of these gears go in. You can see on here the crud's of oil and dust mix. Anyway. Even the sonic cleaner doesn't clean everything, so you run a toothpick through each one of them little holes there, twist it in there, trying to clean out the extra excess dust, oil, shellacking from the oil or whatever. Once I get all that done, and use a, use a hair dryer and all the gears and plates and whatnot, then we can start putting it back together and we'll be back when that happens. By the way, I wanted to mention when you're cleaning your parts, in a cleaner or the sonic cleaner whatever it's nice to have a little basket i was using a coffee filter from the keurig to put my parts in but it didn't stay shut all the time so you had to really be careful i have this antique tea dipper thing what do they call this thing and i just felt yeah it's got the a few holes in it but i kind of am used to my small round basket I guess you'd put tea in or whatever anyway I went online and bought these 
which is nicer. Mine was just a ball. This here is nice because you can open it that way, get your stuff in. The other one I kept having a problem with the the lids. You're supposed to slide it sideways. This here just has a little hole there. Hit that hole. These clamp over the rim and it stays shut. Now I can bounce it around, bounce it around the water when I'm washing it with all the parts still in here, the little parts, and don't have to worry about it popping open on me. Try a little bit of this. It says it's for the dark wood. Not necessarily what I want to really use. I'd normally rather just stain it. We have few places that's showing bare wood. Right here, there's a nail sticking out. Let's see if I can show it to you closer. There's a nail sticking out here, and you ask, why is there a nail there? Normally, along the bottom here, they'll, this is the bottom of the clock, they'll put a nail in here and then cut the head off, but the, they leave it sticking out a little bit, and that's so it'll grab into the wall a little bit, so this clock won't rock on you. So when you go to wind it, every, once, every time you wind it, it moves a little bit until it quits ticking. If that grabs into the wall just a little bit, then it'll stay right where you put it once you get your tick, tock, sound, so it sounds even. So I'm going to probably pull that nail out and I might go ahead and stick it in here again, but you have to remember your bottom or your back door it has this groove and this piece of wood that sticks out pops down inside there so you, where this groove is so you got to be careful where you put the nail so you can get this door back in so to freshen up your clock you can wax it which I'm not going to because I don't have the crown so I can wax it together but this here is all one color realistically it doesn't make any difference but to give it a newer look uh, as you can see I put a little bit on here and this part here I'm not going to put it on here because you see the difference this here is a background color where really you don't care about the clock, you care about the framework or or and the crown that goes on here. I have this box drying right now. I went ahead and did the whole thing. This this clock might not ever get a top on it because they're a little expensive and kind of hard to find right now on eBay. The uh, eBay prices have gone crazy, but I'm not saying anyone's buying the stuff. Uh, usually when you buy old parts uh, for cuckoo clocks on eBay is because you want something that's original. This thing says West Germany, so it's it's old but it's not that old and they also use staples in here so that tells me it's not that old so anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wax this with this uh, Howard feed and wax it has a beeswax in it it says uh, it goes on real easy it'll look really wet and it will soak in and then not be as shiny as it is when you first put it on 
and this will also turn a little bit darker because that's what wax does is it soaks in protects the wood and also that's why it'll be darker and because this was broke I'd like to protect it a little bit more so if there's ever a top bot for this there's a chance that they can go ahead and wax it but I almost want to say good luck on finding a top right now I've searched and I didn't find anything and when I put this back on I'm not going to use the staples I'm going to go ahead and use finished nails because that's something number one easier to get out and I don't know why these staples are set because maybe it pops in with the air gun and it's quicker so it's cheaper done because everyone's trying to save money all these companies and I don't blame them then again if you're selling a product and supposed to be keeping a name for yourself or for the product you should be trying to keep your quality there I mean it's not like you're giving the clocks away for free but this is all my own opinion you guys can have your opinion one way or another I'm just saying that's just the way I feel so you want to try to get the wax clear in so you don't have those white colored gaps we'll call it in there so I have to get a little more wax on my rag okay can you tell a difference this half I waxed with the Howard wax this half I haven't done any this is pure natural still has dust in which I imagine I've already dusted it real quick but I imagine you could use the paintbrush to get it out but you notice how richer the tones getting compared to this dried out look 96 degrees outside lordy okay I forgot to mention to you which actually is no big deal but if you're gonna tear one of these things apart all of this stuff on the outside here all goes to the outside of the clock and so it's always good to keep the stuff that goes to the inside which obviously on this clock there's not that much but uh, keep it separated so that way when you start putting this together it'll uh, be easier for you instead of uh, a little bit overwhelming and also I don't know if you saw it on the video this says it's a uh, the cuckoo clock manufacturing company on here just for a special note so anyway I got all this stuff washed dried yeah that don't look good that's on the inside it it's clean this dear this here did have a uh, varnish on it and it was kind of pitted this one here I went ahead because it's what you see I went ahead and put a little bit of I use this to clean up a little bit and just remember when you're using this don't be afraid to get some of this on your rag and don't push real hard because they'll start scratching it but it does polish it up to make it look good and even at a scratch look don't worry so much about it because this is a movement you don't see unless you're going to rip the clock off the wall and examine it and most of your friends that come over will not do that so we're going to go by the picture
together this wire here I wasn't paying attention and didn't get through the hole it needs to go through so now I have to pop the plate to get the wire down in and that's part of working on clocks you might have to take it all apart again just to get it right So now I need to oil it. So when you oil these things, you don't want to get carried away with the oil because the oil, the dust collects too. And so if you put the oil on, you get too much, take a tissue and dab it off. So it'll be, what we'll say dry. You're trying to get the oil down in this plate where the gears and whatnot hit. This here oiler I have, dumps it out and then it sucks it back up but it's not a cheap oiler so you can just get the regular oilers or some of them use I don't know if it's a piece of plastic or what they're using dip it in oil and then set the drop down where you need it now here I'm flooding it and I, I bring the oil back up in I'm still going to take and touch up the or dab it with a Kleenex so there's no oil setting on the plate. According to the book it says to oil your clock every three to five years before it stops because if it does stop then it's actually time to clean because the oil's gummed up in there turned into a shellac or whatever. So go ahead and get your clocks oiled every three to five years and when we talk about oil not just the backside that you can see you actually need to take the work the movement out and oil the other side too so I'm, gonna, I'm not done with this clock obviously because we don't have any of the timing done I'm going to go ahead and put the front of this clock together because that's what part of the timing is so it clicks into place so I know where this here star part uh, that operates the gong and the cuckoo so I, I need to find out whether I need to move this or not so let me get this front stuff back on this clock so I got these pieces on right because this here is part of your time you need that to drop down into the center you notice that kicks that the cuckoo bird will say up if it's all connected this here catches onto that pin which causes that to go in like this it causes the bird to go back up in inside the door so here I'll go ahead and install my wires these are the lift arms for the bellows and like I say you got a groove there that the paddle slides down into and it hooks into the bottom plate and of course I'll have to put the Eclipse on there but let me go ahead and get these installed hold them into place and then I'll turn it over and get those Eclipse in that's what you want Gong Cuckoo. So now for the front pieces. And so I'm not going to put 
this disc on with the e-clip until I get this timing right because you need to watch the 12 o'clock is the most important part when this thing's coming around you can see how it's how this is lifting just fine right there so now I need to get a I need a nut with the mint so I can turn the minute hand now for what I see here I don't know if you can see that too this is barely catching this So to get the chain back in, it's easier if you do it with the works, the movement out. But if you don't take the movement out and your chain fell out, what you do is you put the screwdriver through the hole where the chain would fit. You see which way it turns and it's turning around this way. And so that's why you'd want to put the chain in to the hole, the first hole. Now you have even length on both of these chains. So the next one, if you don't have room to stick your finger in there, but even though the next one, see which way it turns. Okay, it's also winding around this way. So we'll put it in this hole. And if you can't get your finger in there, once you get the cane, chain caught, you put the screwdriver in this side and then you just start turning it and turn your box around. But we have the chains in. This can go back in because it's not going to be in our way. Set it through that wire there. And then give it a little bit of a crimp on the lower part so it didn't want to fall out. I pulled that nail from the corner and I used the pliers and just pushed it in there. And I have it less than half in the center of this board here and you can see it's com this comes out just fine.
so there's the clock got it running it seems to be working just fine but anyway there it is there it's running don't forget to subscribe because it's free and until next time